it's more it's mobility, it's aging population, it's energy efficiency, and it's urbanization. Basically, if you look on the major trends, I mean, I think we can expect about 9.3 billion people on Earth in 2050, half of them in Asia. We will most probably reach about two-thirds of the people living in cities, which creates a huge uh, um, demand for additional stuff, which is basically Everything always translating into, it's translating into to chemistry also. Um, we will have aging population, population, and with this also... Older people have a different demand pattern than young ones, so this is also, um, and these are usually affluent people, at least a bigger part of that. So that also shapes a certain demand. And then mobility. I mean, we all want to move. It's very much about cars, 1.3 billion, most probably in 2035. 1.3 billion and cars. cars. On Earth. Half of them in Asia, on Asian roads. One again. for every Chinese person right now. Well, they are not all in, chi in China, but. Uh, at least half, most probably, on Asian roads. So I think it's very evident that these tremendous challenges ask for new innovative ideas out of chemical industry. And that's where we are at the forefront. We address it in innovation. We address it very much with strategic partnership with customers in all those industries. And the music is also here increasingly in Asia. What do you see happening in the global economy if you look out three months, six months, one year? Well, indeed, I think BASF is an excellent proxy for the manufacturing industry because we supply materials to all the downstream industries, and with this we have a right ear to the customers and I think get good first-hand information what's going on. I think looking forward, 2011, we expect a good business environment. There are certainly some threats with um, uh, sovereign debt and, and financial community still, but overall I think fundamentals uh, are still strong. Uh, with this, we have also outlined our um, outlook for this year that we uh, want to increase sales and also the EBIT before special income from, for BSF. Let's talk about China for a moment. I guess about 10% of your revenue, non-oil revenue, comes from China. Um, what do you see in the future of China's economy? We've talked about the global economy already. Um, 2010 was a tremendous growth in China again. I think uh, everyone maybe got a little bit used to these extraordinary growth rates in almost all the industries. And we still see good growth in China in our businesses, and this is also what we expect for the rest of 2011. So you see a slight slowdown, but it's not worrisome to you. It's simply part of the plan, a controlled slowdown, if you will. Yes, I think it is a, it is a normalization. I think very much is maybe associated in the moment. It's too short to analyze, but I think a lot is, might be associated with uh, the Chinese government's attempt to slow down uh, e um, inflation. China is still a huge manufacturing base. And what we can see with this development of the new five years plan is that more and more of our customers are also asking for innovative products, uh, not only the bloody commodity kind of products, but more solution-driven innovative products. And this is good for BASF because we are an R&D-driven and innovative company. So we move towards this higher value generation in this direction, which means that we also adapt our structures in the country to reply to this. And so overall, I think this is a very positive uh, business environment, which we not only have in 2011, but certainly the years beyond.